I am continuing to work through these posted exercises uh, from these different sources. So this is a, a series of exercises. I'll, I'll include the link uh, to this site down below. Uh, it's, a, it's a series of exercises from these sources. Uh, all these are put together and chosen uh, by and edited by uh, Mike uh, Gottlieb and others, Ralph Le Layton, I think that's right. Um, and, and so I'm working through these problems. And I've, I've already, I'm on this problem right here. Let's see, where am I at? I put it somewhere. I'm on the bowling ball problem. Yep, here's the bowling ball problem. So the bowling ball problem is actually a pretty famous problem, um, and I've already solved it uh, in my previous video. But the, the idea is you take a bowling ball and you, you throw it down the alley, but it starts off sliding and not rolling, and then eventually it starts rolling and the question is, how, what's, the, what's the final speed based on the initial speed? And uh, how far does it go before it starts rolling? Sorry, I already solved that. But I want to do it again. I want to animate it. And I want to do it in this Python. That's one of the things I do is to say, OK, here are some cool problems. How could I make them uh, in Python? And so we can do this, right? Because if I have, suppose I have this bowling ball. And I, I want to, I've already, I know I have three forces acting. I want to have the gravitational force, I have the normal force, and then I have a backwards uh, frictional force. So if, if it has some velocity, I can find, if I break this into a short time interval, then I can use the momentum principle. This, this is the way I normally do things in Python. I'm going to say this. I can model two things for this bowling ball. First is the motion of the center of the mass, and second is the angular motion. So let's first just consider the motion of the center of mass. If, if I say this, F net as a vector is delta P over delta T. Now, in this case, F net is actually constant, uh, where P is equal to MV. Uh, so I don't actually have to make this assumption, but I'm going to do it anyway. So if I do that and I break this into a short time interval because I want to animate it, then during that time interval I can say this, F net, which I can calculate, is equal to P2 minus P1 over delta T. So from that I can solve for P2. P2 equals P1 plus F net delta T. And so P1 is the momentum at the beginning of the time interval. P2 is momentum at the end of the time interval. So I can use this short time interval to find the momentum at the end of that time interval. Now, I can also find out where it is. So let's call the position of this. And I can use any random uh, vector R1 is where it starts. I can say this. V average is approximately equal to P2 over M, the final momentum. That's not true, but it's, it's kind of true, right? And then that's going to be equal to delta R over delta T. So if I use the same thing, I can get this. R2 equals R1 plus P2 over M delta T. So I can find the new momentum at the end of the time interval, find the new position at the end of the time interval, and then do it all again. And just move it on to the next step. And, and I can animate it that way. Now. Uh, I also want to look at rotation. So in terms of rotation, I can say this. I can say torque net, technically it's a vector, is equal to, uh, I, guess, I guess I should write it like this, I uh, alpha, which is going to be I delta omega over delta T. So I can calculate the net torque. The net torque is going to be due just to this frictional force. And then I can do this as I omega 2 minus omega 1 over delta t. So I can solve for the torque, the, the, the new angular velocity at each interval. So I can say omega 2 equals omega 1. These are vectors, but I'm actually going to do them as a scalar because it's going to be fixed about an axis of rotation, uh, plus the torque divided by i, which I'm, that's why I'm using a scalar moment of inertia, uh, times delta t. And then I can do that. I can find the new angular position, uh, theta 2 equals theta, oh, that's not a vector, theta 1 plus omega 2 
delta t. And so here i for a bowling ball is two-fifths m r squared. But I can find the new position. I can, I can rotate this ball in Python and animate the whole thing, and it's going to be great. Now, what happens is when, when uh, v equals omega times r, then when that happens, the velocity is going to slow down and the angular velocity is going to increase. And when that happens, at this point, it's going to be rolling. And in that case, there's going to be no longer a frictional force. Okay, so it'll continue to roll along. So I'm going to have to include that in there. Now, one of the things with these numerical calculations is I need numbers. So let's just pick some numbers. I'm going to say the mass of the bowling ball is, which it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to pick one kilogram, two kilograms. The radius of the bowling ball is, I'm just trying to think in my head, the radius is like, let's say, five centimeters. Is that too small? Let's say seven. 0 0.07 meters. Uh, the initial velocity, V0, uh, the magnitude of that is going to be equal to um, 2 meters per second. And finally, I need the uh, coefficient of friction uh, because this frictional force is mu times the normal force, which is mg in this case. So I can, I'm going to find the magnitude of that. So mu is going to be equal to um, let's say 0 0.1. We can change that. Okay, now there are some tricks in terms of rotating objects in vPython. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just, <clears throat> I'm going to show you, I had to figure something out about how to, sh if you just make a sphere, you can't tell that it's rotating. And so I had to make a special sphere, and I, I did that uh, because I didn't know how to do it. So let's jump over to Python, and I'll give you the code for this down below, uh, and let's make an animation. All I did was make the sphere, so I don't actually know that this whole thing's going to work. So I'm just letting you know where I stand. Uh, okay, so here we are. So this is a glow, if you have, haven't seen this before, this is glow script v Python. Let me make the code a little bit bigger. Um, and oops, that's too big. And let me just show you what I did. I want to make it rotate. Uh, so I made a sphere. And one of the things that you can do in glow script v Python is to give it a texture. Okay, and you can make it look like the Earth, and that's all fine and dandy. But I want to make it like a half-colored sphere so you can see that it's rotating. So the way you do that is you say you give it a texture, and you can actually have a texture post to a, a, a link somewhere uh, that's an image, and it maps that image on there. And I, and I don't actually know how to map a square image onto a sphere, but it worked, so I don't really care about that. So here's my sphere. And let me show you the image. I made an image. Let's see, here's my image. This is my image I, I uploaded to imager uh, it's just a half orange half blue square and then I can map it onto there and then I, I actually made this rotate so uh, there you can see that it's rotating and I'm pretty happy so how do you rotate an object in in Python uh, so there's this code right here if I name the sphere b2 I can rotate it with b2 dot rotate I have to give it an origin about the angle about the point about which I want to rotate it and the axis about which I want to rotate it and the angle I want to rotate it so I'm gonna in this case I want to rotate it about its center mass which was at the origin uh, the vector axis of the vector to rotate is about the z-axis and then the angle was this uh, Omega times ZT so that was just for practice okay so I do want to copy this code right here. Um, yeah, I didn't even log into Imager. I just uploaded an image and, and copied the link. You can't use any image anywhere. It has to be this some type of website that allow you to embed an image directly, which not all do. So I'm just letting you know about that. Okay, so I've got that code copied. So let's just go and make a new program. Uh, new trinket, glow script, uh, and right here. Okay, so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to put that as a comment. I forget it. Okay, so let's go ahead and put our parameters in here. I'm going to copy these down. Uh, M equals 2. R equals 0 0.07. Uh, V0 equals 2. Mu equals 0 0.1. Uh, G, I don't, I don't, I guess I should. G equals the vector 0, negative 9.8, 0. Okay, let's make the ball. Ball equals sphere. Now, if, if you don't feel comfortable uh, with Glow Script v Python, I'll, there's a, I have a playlist of 
with a tutorial that goes through every single thing that you could want to know, no, that you should know about closed group view Python. It doesn't have everything. Uh, so this is an object of type sphere. Now, I do need to give it a position. Uh, so let's just say it's at the, let's put it uh, in the negative x direction. So I'm going to say the, if I'm thinking of a bowling ball. I want the, the center in this, in the center. So let's put it, um, I'm going to put it five meters back. Minus five, zero, zero, uh, no. Minus five, I'm going to put the ground at y equals zero. So I want to shift this up so it's above the ground. So it's y position is actually going to be r. That's the center of mass, the center of the sphere. The radius is equal to r. Uh, and then I'm going to say texture equals, I already forgot how to do this, quote that. I think that's what it is. Let's run that. Okay, there, there's my sphere. It's just tiny. Let's let's move it back a little bit. So let's put this at negative two. Oh, let's make it bigger. Ten centimeter ball. I know that's too big, but whatever. At least we can kind of see it. And I'm gonna move it back uh, three meters. Okay, now let's make the floor. So floor equals box. Uh, position equals vector zero. Uh, now, I, I want to shift it down again because I'm going to make it, let's say, I'm trying to think how thick I should make my floor. Uh, I, I should make it thickness of R. Let's do that. Uh, let's do 2R. So I want to shift it down uh, amount of R. So it's going to be negative R, 0. The size is a vector. So I need to give it the X length, the Y length, and so forth. So let's call this, um, let's say this is L equals 3. So then that way I can change things up easy. L. So the size is actually going to be 2L, right? Because I want it to go twice that length. Uh, the Y size is going to be 2 times R. And then the Z size is how far back, how thick it is. Let's, let's say that's 1 meter. I'm just going to pick that. Uh, and then let's put, let's just leave it as no color. We'll give it a, a white color. And there's, there's my, there you go. Looks nice. There's my bowling alley. Okay. Now I need to give the ball some initial conditions. So I'm going to say ball.p equals uh, m times, and I could actually do ball.m as a value, but I'm just going to call it m, times the vector uh, v0, 0, 0. So it is indeed a vector. Um, I guess I should calculate the frictional force ff equals mu. It's always going to be pointing in the negative x direction here. So it's going to be mu times uh, the vector mu times g, mag g, right? I can't do g. I shouldn't have even done that. Times the vector negative 1, 0, 0. Oh, m. Mu times m times g. Okay. Now I need time, so I'm going to say uh, t equals 0, dt equals 0 0.01. Uh, I need an omega value because I'm going to be changing omega. So let's put omega equals 0. Um, yeah, that's fine. I don't actually need theta. I can just say uh, omega. I can, I, I'll, I'll, I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our loop. Let's say I'm going to do it for a time at first, and we can change this loop later. So I'll say while t is less than four, I just pick that, rate 100. So since I have a time step of one one hundredths, a rate of 100 says don't do more than 100 calculations per second. Now the first thing I can do is say f net, uh, f net is just gonna be equal to ff, which I know is dumb, but because I have the normal force pushing up, I have gravity pulling down, those two forces cancel, so I don't have to worry about that. Now I'm going to update the momentum of the ball. Ball.p equals ball.p plus f net plus 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 f net times dt. Now in Python, uh, that equal sign is a make equal to sign, so it, those ball.ps don't actually cancel. Now I can update the position of the ball, ball.pos. So this is ball, there's my ball, pos is the location of the center of that is equal to ball the old position plus ball dot p 
times dt divided by divided by m. So once I divide it by m, I get the final velocity, and that should update that. Uh, and then I can update time, t equals t plus dt. I'm not going to rotate it. I'm just going to run it like this. Let's just run it and see what happens. So there's my ball. It's slowing down. So it looks like, it looks like, oh, and it, and it came back the other way. <laughs> That's great. Um, so let's make, <clears throat> let's make the friction a little bit lower. But that's fine. And we can, we can make everything change later. Actually, I kind of like that. Let's just change L to 2. That way you can see it a little bit better. Okay. Now, what about the rotation? Um, actually, let me... So I said that if, if the velocity... If the angular velocity... What did I say? If the angular velocity... If the velocity is omega times r, then, then, the, then the friction force is zero. So let's do this. Let's put that right at the top. If, om, if what did I say? Omega, time, well, I'm using w, times r is, let's say, if, if it's greater than, because it, it may never even be equal to. So if it's greater than or equal to uh, the magnitude of ball dot p divided by m, that's the velocity. If that's true, then ff equals vector 0, 0, 0. Okay, so that's a way to turn off the friction force. Um, so now we need to do our angular stuff. So what did I say over here? I said I'm going to calculate the torque as a scalar. Uh, I'll just call it tau. Tau equals uh, r times the magnitude of ff. I've already, I've already taken into account that. Um, let's see, so that, that actually be, yeah, I think I might have the sign wrong here, but that's fine. Now what I want to do is to update the angular velocity. So I'm going to say omega, oh, I need I, I need I up here. I equals two-fifths times M times R squared. So I can calculate omega is equal to, Tau, tau over i is no, is the old omega plus tau over i times dt. So right there, you can see when the friction force turns off. So I am updating omega. Now I want to rotate the ball. So ball dot rotate. And what did I say? Rotate. I need. I didn't spell it right. Is it just? I think I just do this, right? I need to give it the origin, which is ball.pos. Uh, the ax, is it the axis? Yeah, the axis equals vector uh, zero, zero, 001. And then, oops, that's right. And then the angle is going to be equal to uh, omega times dt, right? Because omega times dt is my change in theta. And that's how much I want to rotate it about. I can't. I don't want to. I don't want to rotate it theta, right? Because theta is going to keep changing and increasing. Now to increase the, the amount, I want to. It's already rotated some. Um. I think this should work. Let's just let's just run it. I think that's. I think that'll work. I, okay. I got the. I got that backwards. So let's say minus. If omega is less than, no, negative. If negative omega, because the angular velocity is actually backwards, I think. Okay, I think that's working. Let's, let's decrease my coefficient of friction. I think it rolled very quickly. Where's my coefficient of friction? Let's put this at uh, 0, 3, 1. Sliding, starting to roll, starting to roll. Okay, I think I did it. Okay, but now I want to, <clears throat> I, I want to, um, let's just do this while 
while negative w times r is less than or equal to mag ball dot p divided by m. So this will just stop it once it starts rolling. And then I can print out, now I can print the velocity. I can print the distance. So I can say print uh, d equals, and the distance is going to be equal to, where did it start? It started at negative l. So it's going to be uh, ball dot pos dot x minus or plus L, right, minus negative L. That's going to give me the change in position, and I'll be in meters. Uh, and then I can print the velocity, print V final equals uh, ball dot P dot X divided by M meters per second. I guess I should print the theoretical stuff too. Uh, let's say print d theory equals okay so i am looking at my old solution that i got where did i put it here it is i said d was uh 12 times v0 squared v0 squared uh divided by uh 49 times mu times g, mag of g though, meters. And then I had uh, the, the final velocity print v theory, That's, and that was equal to, where did it go? Oh, five seven v zero. So it's gonna be five times v zero divided by seven meters per second. Let's see what happens here. Okay. And I get D, oh, they don't agree. They're off by a factor of two. Interesting. Or almost, ooh, that's not two. So D equals 3.2 V final Oh, the, v, the, the final velocities agree. Oh, no, they do agree. Okay. Every, that, per, well, look at that. I just did, there's my, count my velocity from uh, Python, and that's the theoretical, and then the velocities match up too. So I'm pretty happy. Oh, now, the one thing I, I want to make, I know this, this is already 23 minutes long because I see the, the clock right there, but I do want to do one thing extra. I want to make a graph of the velocity of the ball, the x velocity of the ball, versus omega times v. So we can see that the velocity of the ball is decreasing. The, the omega r is increasing until they meet. Uh, so let's do that. Let's, make a, let's add a graph because it would be fun, right? Don't you think it would be fun? So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to say uh, g1 equals graph. Uh, title equals uh, sliding bowling ball. Uh, the x title is going to be time probably should be distance what the heck let's just plot it versus distance right so let's say uh, X in meters and then the time and then the y axis uh, y title it's going to be equal to um, it, it's like V it's not actually V but V in meters per second uh, let's also do this uh, actually, let's put it over here. Uh, width equals 500. Height equals 250 because it will make it a little bit smaller. Now, I'm going to plot two things. I'm going to say uh, FV is G curve. Uh, color equals color dot blue. Uh, label equals V. FW, which is for omega, G curve. Color equals color dot red. Uh, label equals uh, omega r. Okay, so I have those two things. Now down here, I just need to, to plot them. So I'm going to actually go over here. I'm going to change this back to t uh, so we can see when they, they meet. So when t is 
less than three, while t is less than three. Uh, down here, I'm gonna put it after the time, even though it probably should be before. I'm gonna say fv.plot. I'm gonna plot the x coordinate of the ball, which is ball.pos.x, and then the velocity of the ball, which is ball.p.x divided by m. I can't plot the momentum, because that's a vector. I'm just plotting the x component. And then fw.plot is gonna be ball.pos.x, and this is gonna be omega times r. And that's not a vector, so I can't do that. Okay, let's see if this indeed works. I, I never saved it, did I? Wow. Bowling ball animation. Uh, save. Okay, let's run it. Okay, there's my my animation. Here's my graph. Ooh, okay, I need to plot the, I forgot. The angular velocity is in the negative direction, so I need to change that to negative. Okay, that's easy to do. Let's go down here and change the plot to negative and run it. So there they go and boom, they both have this, now it's rolling. So it's rolling right there uh, at, you can see a distance of 1.4 and you can also see the velocity of one point, and I think that is what I had, right? Yeah. No, it was three. That's the final velocity at 1.9. The D is 1.4, that's right. Oh, that's, is that the momentum? 1.4, okay, that's the final velocity. The V final is 1.4. D theory is three. That's not three. Did I plot time? What did I do? Ball dot, oh, that's why. Because <clears throat> that, I, start, I didn't start the ball at x equals zero. I started the ball at x equals negative L. So that's why those two don't agree. Okay, this code down below. Playlist to all these problems down below. Link to the website with all the problems on there and their own solutions uh, down below. So all that's there. So I hope you had a good time. That one was really fun. I really enjoyed animating this this ball because something that you don't normally do. So, and I did learn something about uh, textures. So I learned something too.